Welcome to season three of Construction Week in Focus, CW's bi-weekly video series covering a wide range of key issues every week across the region's built environment. My name is Jack Ball, senior reporter at Construction Week, and today I turn my attention four kilometers off the coast of Dubai, more specifically to the man-made archipelago of islands called The World, which Construction Week visited earlier this year on a site visit. Few projects have captured the imagination of the international construction sector like the World Islands has. Following the project's high-profile launch in 2003, the 300 small islets were claimed from the sea to form a collection of private, residential and resort islands promised a level of exclusivity that was largely unrivaled, even by Dubai's standards. Although interest in the mega project lagged somewhat during the 2008 financial crisis, Dubai-based real estate developer Kleindice Group seized the opportunity to snap up six islands, those known as Germany, the floating Venice, Sweden, Switzerland, St. Petersburg and Main Europe. These islands comprise the heart of Europe project located off Dubai's Palm Jumeirah and will become home to a mix of hotels, palaces, villas, chalets, vessels and underwater living experiences. The latter will comprise the floating seahorse villas, which will be built partly underwater and will mainly be located around the heart-shaped St. Petersburg Island. Sweden Island, which is home to Kleindice Group Show Villa, will eventually house 10 four-storey, seven-bedroom beach palaces. Germany Island will also be home to 32 residential villas and construction on both islands is already underway under the project's first phase, set to complete by the end of this year. Kleindice announced a doubling of its staff numbers last year in its effort to finish phase one. The employee headcount of 878 in January last year increased to 1,672 by the end of December last year. Today, there is a workforce of more than 1,800. Phase one of the development includes the completion of 78 floating seahorse villas, as the developer's chairman, Joseph Kleindeist, tells Construction Week following a site visit with the mega project's director of architectural design, Marco Bolzoni. And I quote, the construction of the Seahorse Villas is handled by J.K. Bowen, a Kleindice company with more than 1,800 employees living on the island, as Kleindice says. The Seahorse Villa model was constructed entirely in-house using prefabrication techniques in a bid to avoid cold joints in the concrete through the use of steel moulds. Bolzoni said, and I quote, we cast all the way up to above the waterline. The covering slab can be done afterwards because it is above the waterline and we can have a cold joint there. The results is a shell and core enclosed building ready to be put into the water. Much of the building fit out is done when the building is actually in the water and Bolzoni said that it's actually quite complicated to ensure that things are level. There is a lot of adjustment that he said. The final setup of the ballast is carried out when most of the house has been completed. He said we need to have 90 to 95% of the weight in place and there's a lot of spreading and positioning that happens at that point. The pontoon attached to each seahorse villa will also be used to run all of the structure's main infrastructure such as fresh water, power and data cables. As a result, all connections will be hidden but will be raised above the water to ensure longevity and so that repairs can be carried out easily. Given the floating seahorse villa's underwater views, Bolzoni says that ensuring a healthy seascape surrounding the properties is very important. The villas are not facing a garden, but an underwater world, he says. The developer does not have gardeners, but a diving team and a marine biologist instead, who takes care of everything outside of its floating seahorse villas. Kleindice Group even has a program on site to develop new colonies of naturally occurring coral through a process called fragmentation. Corals are collected from other projects along the shore, whether that's from a new marina that is being built or a new project that requires dredging or digging in areas that already have coral. 
the group's team retrieves as much living coral as possible and through fragmentation, the corals are propagated in a controlled environment. Some of the bigger pieces are used for further fragmentation or they are used in the coral gardens that are connected to the seahorse villas. The unique and complex requirements of the project mean that in order to achieve the Heart of Europe's first phase completion deadline of late 2019, the developer will hire an additional 250 staff per month for the first six months of 2019, as Kleindice told Construction Week. This will also support the completion of phases two and three. Bolzoni said that the Switzerland island and some of the hotels on main Europe, which will be the big island, will be the last to be handed over. This is where most of the facilities are and the bigger buildings take most of the time to construct. With the heart of Europe's many moving parts, a lot more construction announcements across its six islands can certainly be expected over the coming year. So do stay tuned at Construction Week Online for more updates. As always, you've been watching Construction Week in Focus. We publish new videos every Sunday and Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. And if you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, including those from our sister titles, you can click on the subscribe button just down below, or as always, visit our YouTube channel, Construction Week, for more great videos. And do leave a comment if there's any topic that you'd like myself or anyone from the Construction Week team to discuss in another episode. However, until next time, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.